Welcome back, Akron fans, to the 2013 Akron Tournament cast. This is still round one. We're in the final series of round one, which involves which involves me versus Aragant. And as usual, I shall be referring to myself as I was playing the game in the third person. So when I refer to me, I am me, the caster, Shadow 3 talking to you right now. When I say Shadow 3 except in that previous sentence, I am referring to me having played the game against Aragant in the series we are about to watch. With that out of the way, let us begin. The first game, once again, we're back on Desecrated Temple. After watching Shalag vs. Shardan, we are back again with... Myself and Aragant are starts to say Shadow Fury Three Three and Aragant. Let's get that straight. Shadow Fury Three Three going for Vekir and Aragant is going for Grekim. Now Aragant is very keen on his Octo rushes, very very keen. He always has been ever since he started playing this game. He's always wanted to do Octo rushes. He's always been doing Octo rushes. He has switched over to Octo Legos though. He's definitely focused more on that. But it was a very common thing he did when he played early on, and I expect we'll be seeing that here. And I realize, of course, having played the game, that I know exactly what happened, but bear with me. Just... Let's both act like I don't know what happened here. Because who knows? I may have developed severe retrograde amnesia. I haven't. But you don't know that. Except now you do. Well, there goes my secret. Anyway. What will Shadow Fury do next? I don't know. Actually, okay, Shadow Fury going up for scouting. He is moving a Shinveer over to scout the west side of the map and a Tethvir over to right to Aragon's base. Now I should point out, and I noticed a lot of players weren't actually doing this, but the thing in Akron is that sounds penetrate Fog of War. So you can tell where your opponent is in a map like Desecrated Temple by simply going to the very start of the timeline and listening around all of the start points. And when you start hearing squishy productions, or either squishy sounds or production sounds, squishy sounds meaning they're Grekum, then you know that they started there. I think that's where they began. Whereas if you, or just the clicking sounds of the resource processors going into place, that's where you know that they are there. And that's what Shadow 3 3 apparently did. Actually, is in fact what Shadow 3 3 3 did in this game. Well, Aragant, I think he didn't. It looks like he is scouting out more directly. He is going to find the Shinveer that's over to the east side of the map, while another Octo going down to the south. And Shadow Fury is not really prepared for this right now. But he probably will be. He does have a comm hub over... Right by Aragon's base, it is able to see what's going on. And now Aragon has started to attack. The Octo coming in here. Shadow Fury apparently not quite sure whether or not he should have gone for defense early on, but he definitely should have, getting a foundation with a couple Zion Beard defending against the Octo coming in. With the second Octo in Aragon's base, I think Aragon might be planning on using that for later. Sending that in with the other Octo, probably in a later iteration. But we are viewing two minutes down from where Shadow Fury was looking. And I expect... Oh, Octopod! No! Aragon changing this up, going for an early Octopod instead of early Octos. And Shadow Fury not quite ready for this. He does have a Depot coming up at the three-minute mark. Nothing yet from Aragon to deal with this, but Aragon is two minutes down from here. There's plenty of playable past available, so he could very easily change up what he's planning. And we see the Octopod with Octos. Probably another Octo will be coming in fairly shortly. And the Arcticus over to the north side of the map. I think Aragon might be trying to build a hidden base over the north side of the map. And with Shadow Fury sending a Shinveer over here, it's likely he's going to be building a hidden base here as well. But Aragant is setting himself up. Oh, he will be setting himself from his point of view. Actually, moving his Articus back. Okay, apparently he is not planning on building a hidden base over to the north side of the map. He is keeping the Articus inside the west side main base. Getting another Octo, though, and I expect he'll start attacking fairly soon. Now, I just remembered something that I haven't really seen much. Used to be, players would often use Articuses, just hover them around their opponent's base and then set one of their units as leader of the Arcticus, because you can set any of these units as the leader, their lead group here. You can set that on the Arcticus, and the unit will basically be the hierarchy leader. The Arcticus is still handling all the hierarchies, but it's also doing much of scouting, and since it's a thousand health, it is very powerful. I haven't seen a lot of players do that in a long time, though. It just, it just crossed my mind right now, but I'm a bit surprised I haven't seen players do that. I think there was a reason why players weren't doing that. I mean, the thing is, you are putting your Arcticus at risk, anti units will start to hit it, and that does mean your hierarchies can go down. I'm pretty sure it does work, however, if you are using lead group. You can't use the Arcticus, you can't go from the Arcticus and send dispatch orders while it's flying, but I'm pretty sure that it will still communicate orders from a leader, if that leader is set to lead the Arcticus. However, Aragant not using that, instead just using the Arcticus for dispatch commands directly, 
keeping it in his base and able to find the Teth Fury that built the Com Hub a little bit late for that. But Shadow Fury is moving the Com Hub over to the little ditch here just to make it that much harder for Aragon to deal with it and also have a slightly easier time seeing inside Aragon's base. But Aragon going for a very powerful attack with two Octos and an Octopod. Shadow Fury did get a depot within the minute or so, but Aragon. He can pretty much go for a timing attack right here. This depot is going to still take another, I think, 40 seconds to build or so. Once Shadow Fury starts, and he doesn't even have the QP yet. It's going to take about 30 seconds of that QP to be get. Actually, 10 seconds now. He's not got it yet, and Aragon looks like he's going over to the southeast side of the map. Not quite sure that he needed to do that. No, that was not necessary. Granted, we did see in the Shalka Sheridan match that this southeast and northwest bases are quite lucrative. They're very good choices, or they can be quite good choices for expansion. Now, in a map like this, a hidden base is probably better off at the cross position to your opponent's start. But even still, putting it here is fairly safe. Really, I mean, it's a bit safer to have it if you're in cross positions and you go over here, it's a slightly longer rush distance, but not by much. By the time it matters, you'll have air units, so the rush distance by ground will not make a difference. And Shadow Fury has gotten units, he has gotten some ground units, and Aragont not attacking yet. He, The depot is still under construction, he could attack right now and win. But he hasn't done so yet. Shadow Fury is fully aware of what Aragont's up to in his main base, but not aware of what's going on outside of his base. And it looks like Shadow Fury is... Well, it's really hard to say. It's a question of whether or not Aragon actually goes to the attack. He's not going for the attack. He's holding up. He's just containing the ramp right now. Giving Shadow Fury the time he needs to build up units. Now, of course, Aragon could attack while Shadow Fury is getting teleport on his units. Getting skip teleport, rather. And if he does then, like, right now, right now, at the five minute mark, these units would kill Shadow Fury's vehicles. That would be the game. But he's not going for it yet. Aragon has just let them sit there, and I think he's going to just let them sit there for the rest of the... Well, probably the rest of the game. But that is the timing right there that is gone. So, Shadow Fury is... Is he going to attack with this, though? Is he gonna, he's not aware of these, I don't believe. Ah, he just found out about them, so he is going to try attacking them. And at this point, Aragon, from his point of view, we'll see what he's, if he's going to respond to this. He's now aware that he's been attacked. Well, now he's aware that he's been attacked. And... At the 422 mark, he is going for the attack, but this is a little late. The depot has been constructed. These Zion Pulsars are being built. And they will be able to fend these off. However, Skip Teleport is still going to be upgraded. That's still going to distract them. That's still going to be an issue, and that would still give Aragon enough time to deal with all this. And Shadow Fury, on the other hand, is not going to rest on his laurels. He is going back, double checking, make sure nothing bad happens. And looks like Skip Teleport might still be upgraded. Yes, it is getting upgraded for... for one of the Zion Pulsers, the other Zion Pulsar, that has been undone. So, looks like Shadow Fury might be trying to undo it on both. And that appears to be an undo order. And indeed it is, the Zion Pulsar able to continue to attack. It's a close call though. Losing the vehicle, the Zion Veer able to eject and able to continue fighting. Able to get rid of this Octopod, the Teth Pulsar, sorry, the Teth Veer that would become the Teth Pulsar. Ultimately going down, but Shadow Fury can still rebuild from here. Aragon jumping back to double check this attack. Maybe see if he can micromanage it bit differently. Not really sure what he could have done at this point, honestly. Other than attacked about a minute sooner. So, he still has a fairly strong economy. Shadow Fury does have a weaker economy. He only has six LCRPs, or possibly five LCRPs, two QPRPs. This one here is on LC. So, no. Six LC and one QP, while Aragon, on the other hand, has five LC and three QP. So, Aragon has an economic advantage. He is getting more units built up to try to use that economic advantage to his advantage. And Shadow Fury, on the other hand, getting a hidden base over to the east side of the map. Bit of a weird choice at this point, but doesn't matter. He is going for an attack, or at least a bit of a scouting attack. Scouting... Well, he knows that... He doesn't need to scout. He knows what's going on. He knows that there is nothing in this main base. And Aragon, on the other hand, jumping back, and going to start probably building up some defense forces to deal with this. So Shadow Fury is going to have to go back and deal with that once that inevitably happens. But... For now, at this iteration, Shadow Fury does have... No, he has to deal with the Seppi and Faro that are being built to get rid of his forces. And it looks like the Seppi is being distracted long enough from Aragon's point of view. Let's see what he's actually doing. No, he's changed that up to a couple of Octos instead. Focusing very heavily on using Octos to fight this off. And Shadow Fury is... He still has skipped teleport. He still could get into a better terrain position to deal with these Octos. And it looks like... He's not done so yet. He's jumping behind Aragont, and 
I'll see what he's up to in his main base. He's going for more foundations. He does have an annex over here, getting probably a Zion Veer as soon as he can. And no, he's gone for on the ridge. Octopus cannot counter this, and Octopods were not built. Aragon did not set up Octopods that would counter this. So I think that Shadow Fury has this game, and Aragon agrees. Shadow Fury wins match one on Desecrated Temple. So we'll have match two just in a moment. So stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the second match of Shadow Fury CC3 versus Aragon series of the 2013 Akron Christmas Tournament Round 1. I am Shadow Fury CC3, your commentator. The same one who played the game, except later. The future version of it. Future Fury! Well, relatively speaking. Anyway, we'll have second game on Cataclysm Ridge. So let's get started. Shadow Fury CC3 starting at the west side of the map. Southwest side of the map, rather. Aragon starting at the northeast side of the map. Species has not changed. Aragon continues to be Grekdom. Shadow Fury continues to be Vekgear. And Shadow Fury is very quickly going for Scout. Probably going to be building Com Hubs once again, although I'm not sure, because the thing is that Shadow Fury is very fond of Com Hubs, or at least this time he was very fond of Com Hubs. And Aragon was quite aware of this and is trying to counter it. So there was a bit of mind games outside of the match itself, because these matches actually happen over the course of about four days. Most of the tournament matches happened within an hour, but in our case, it was like four days because I got, I was busy and then got sick and then Aragon got busy and so it took a while for us to complete these, which means there's a lot of time for mind games and chicanery to happen in between. So Shadow Fury might be a little bit uncomfortable with thinking that Aragon can actually just counter the use of Com Hubs completely, which. I mean, if Aragon's aware the Com Hubs exist, he can easily go and just deal with them. The thing is, especially Cataclysm Ridge, there isn't a safe place to put Com Hubs. Even back here, this is actually off the edge of the map, so it's not a safe place. There is nowhere that Com Hubs could really safely go. Everywhere can be attacked by Octos, everything can be hit, as long as Aragon knows it's there. And the bases are quite large, so he can't easily put a Com Hub on the edge and see the entire base. So Shadow Fury. Not sure what he's gonna try to do here. Might try to go for Com Hubs as a way of distracting, flying over the base, and then expecting Seppies to be built as a counter. But it's hard to say. Shadow Fury, however, looks like he's actually going for a very quick depot. Going for a depot rush here. Never mind. He's apparently just going to try to win outright early on rather than waiting until the game gets to late game. I mean, it worked out in the first game, so he might as well. And the thing is, Shadow Fury has this win. He has one win already, so if he gets the second win, that'll just finish the tournament. We'll finish round one, and Shadow Fury will go on to the next round. But Aragon, on the other hand, does have a fair amount of time to prep for this. He is going for a rush of his own, apparently, getting Octos as well. Probably going to counterattack with this, and Shadow Fury building his depot kind of slow, honestly. I mean, he's not going for a full-on depot rush. It used to be you'd have, like, one RP on LC, one RP on QP, before the three RP opener, and you just go for an early depot. Now, granted, that was back in the time when you could spend that extra the 80 LC on the depot but still even with the current economy set up this is taking a little while two minutes in and skip teleport Zion Pulsar has just come up now at this point if Shadow Fury would attack directly right now that would actually be very difficult for Aragon to deal with but not impossible he is getting Q Plasma he would be able to build an Octopod it's two minutes 26 seconds into the game and yeah right now right now Zion Pulsar could attack and deal a fair amount of damage probably wouldn't win. And I don't mean right now, I mean, like, and actually Shadow Fury has gone and bookmarked this point in time. It looks like he might be getting a bit greedy, getting a second Zion Pulsar, trying to use that to defend as well. And Aragon, on the other hand, moving out with the Octos, and one of the Octos is going up to continue to build him. And the thing is, of course, Shadow Fury would have to attack right at the unplayable past edge, so that Aragon does not have a chance of actually dealing with this before it becomes too late. Still, it will be kind of tricky to do. The thing is, the Unplayable Past Edge does have a time wave on it, which means attacking like this would be risky. Like, Aragon would still have a chance to build an Octopod to counter against it, and there isn't a safe place for the Zion Pulsar to go. Like, this area, maybe. I don't think a Zion Pulsar can fit back there. I'm not even sure that's still on the map. So, essentially, no, that's still on the map, but I think that is a bit too small. I don't think a Zion Pulsar can fit in that little crevice. If it could, that would actually be very powerful. The Octopod would have nothing it could do against it. 
and they would just be able to get rid of the RPs with impunity. But I don't know if that's a viable option. Never actually tried that. Regardless, no, on this side it's a bit brighter, and it's... Oh, you know what? A Zion Pulsar might just barely fit there. At any rate, Shadow Fury is not going that aggressive with this. He's definitely shown off that he has the depot. It's a relatively early depot. I think Aragon is going to be a bit suspicious. He hasn't done anything to respond to this quite yet, but he probably is suspicious. Getting advanced structures, and actually, with advanced structures, probably going to go for Spire. Probably going to go for air units from there, but he might actually decide to go for static defenses instead. I think those require... Well, getting a couple of Octos... I think the domes do require advanced structures, which means he could just go for that instead. And now Shadow Fury, of course, his attack point is about a minute away of present moving forward, like an actual real-time minute away from when he wants to use it. And Aragon, on the other hand, has these Octos, and yeah, domes are available now. And yes, they actually are advanced structures, I recall now. They do require advanced structures, so Octos being built up, not sure he's going to use them for defense directly, for advanced structure, dome, or for just RPs. But Shadow Fury, bookmark three, getting very close to the unplayable past, and that would be the best time to attack. Of course, we saw the first game that Aragon lost because he did not take advantage of timing, and it looks like Shadow Fury might be in a tight spot for the same reason. Because the thing is, Shadow Fury does not have a comm hub on Aragon's base. Aragon apparently was actually kind of scouring around with them. He did get rid of the units that would have built a comm hub, but there is no such comm hub. So Shadow Fury is not aware of what's going on in here. He doesn't know about all the autos. More importantly, he doesn't know that at the point he bookmarked at timeline three, or timeline point he bookmarked at bookmark three, is actually completely open. He can just go for it. And it looks like he is in fact doing that. He is trying to apparently distract Aragon with an attack in the present before going for this attack for the unplayable past. And the unplayable past attack is hitting, or it will be as soon as he gets the chance to. The red time move is carrying it, so that will expose what's going on. Aragon has not quite responded at the unplayable past edge, not quite aware that that's happening, but it is now on the red time wave. It is carrying forward. Shadow Fury does see the damage is being dealt, and actually, from his point of view, damage is being dealt back to his Zion Pulsar. Interesting. Well, we'll see what happens when he actually jumps over to there, but Aragon did take a bit of damage, but not a whole lot. Looks like possibly the Zion Pulsar had pre-existing orders to teleport and teleported away. That would be a big shame, and I think it actually might have done that, because it's the same Zion Pulsar that attacked, and I don't know if Shadow Fury actually undid the orders that were sent. And, yeah, the Zion Pulsar, no, it moved away. It didn't even teleport away. It just... It has started moving away. Unfortunately for Shadow Fury, this is a perfect attack too, and now it's gone away and forgot to undo orders. That is going to put Shadow Fury pretty far behind, because he was very clearly going for a powerful opening depot rush, and that's not going to work. Because it's... The Zion Pulse has gone out of the way. Now, Shadow Fury is trying to make up for it, but it's too late at this point. He can start to try to attack a bit, but Aragon doesn't seem to be too worried about this, actually. Although, Shadow Fury in a great position right now. Actually, he could still take it from here, in fact. I think Aragon has more Chrono Energy. He could go back and deal with this. But even with that, Shadow Fury does have a fairly powerful attack going on. He can actually get rid of this tread. Aragon might still not have this game, but we'll see. Aragon is looking back at this point in time. He is getting Octopods. No, Aragon does still have the Octopods. He can still build that. The game is not Shadow Fury's. And Shadow Fury is trying to get rid of these Octopods. Like I said, it's just kind of a shame that the orders were not undone. But that's a very important part about Acorn. You have to make sure you undo your orders. Especially if you're doing a two-pronged attack, a future and past attack. You've got to make sure you undo the orders from the future. Like, when you're in the past, you got to undo those orders after you go for what's going to ultimately be your final attack. And that seems to have been Shadow Fury's undoing. So Shadow Fury right now does not have a lot of economy. Actually, what am I kidding? Three resource processors. Just the starting resource processors. That's all that Shadow Fury has. He doesn't even have any Zion Veer. This is clearly an all-or-nothing attack, and it's come up nothing. It has not worked out well for Shadow Fury. I think he might keep going. This is a tournament match. He might as well, but it's going to be an uphill struggle from this point on. And it's going to be... And it's going to be tight. I mean, really, I would say Aragon has this match. Shadow Fury basically has no chance to win this match right now. He's not even shooting for anything at this point. He's... Wait a sec. Well, he's shooting for trying to micromanage this Zion Veer, but that's about it. In terms of macro, no. And this Zion Pulsar does not have skip teleport upgraded on it, but it doesn't matter. It's too late. There's already defenses for it. There's already the potential for... Actually, no. The Aragon's Reef was not built 
Advanced Rush was not researched. Ultimately, that was all undone. So Shadow Fury's attack did actually have an effect. But this thing doesn't have skip teleport. What the... Okay. I... I think something's gone wonky. I don't want to say this, but I th the replay doesn't look right. I mean, at this point, I should have been attacking here by now, I think. If I recall correctly, this Zion Balser went in to attack and got fended off by domes. Although Aragon hasn't actually built said domes yet, and doesn't even have the reef to do it with... Okay, bear with me. I'm just going to go forward, because I think that something's gone wonky. Yes, it looks like something has gone wonky. Oh, crap. Well, so much for the replay bugs being fixed. I guess they're like 99%, 99.99% fixed, but there's always that 1 in 10,000 replay that is going to be not quite what you'd like it to be. Now, it looks like Shadow Fury has the intent to attack, but hasn't actually gone for it, and... Yeah, this is... this is not good. The Shadow Fury is going up for an attack with the Zion Pulsar, but... This isn't what happened when the Zion Pulsar hit... I mean, the Zion Pulsar teleported in. It didn't walk in. That's for sure. But yes, it looks like the replay playback has not been accurate. This is unfortunate, I'm afraid, because... Well... Yeah, I think this is... Hopeless. So, in case you're wondering, Aragon actually won this match. He beat me, he had a bunch of domes in his main base, and my Zion Pulsar simply could not get in and deal enough damage. I kept trying to send them in, I actually sent them, trying to do some clever moves behind the RPs, but no, it was not to be, and ultimately, I was undone by just getting attacked in the main base. I tried to expand up north a bit, but that basically did it. So that, unfortunately, game two, not the most entertaining. Sorry about that. We'll move on to game three shortly. Hopefully that will actually play back properly, so stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to Game 3 of the Shadow 3 vs. Aragon series. It's going to be on Snowblind, and we shall begin immediately. So unfortunately, Game 2 had a weird replay playback bug. That has not ha This is the first time that's happened in months. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, that is the first replay playback bug I have seen, I think, this year, actually. Definitely in the last six months, possibly throughout the entire 2013. I don't think I've seen a replay bug in that time. So they've definitely been massively reduced in frequency, but apparently have not been eliminated outright, which is unfortunate. Aragon, on the other hand... Okay, Aragon is going for Grekum. Shadow Fury 3 going for Vekir. Nothing much changed there. Snowblind is a map we actually saw earlier. Fairly small map. Not a whole lot of resources in the mains, but a fair amount of resources spread across the map. Kind of dangerous to expand, but definitely worthwhile if you get away with it. And Aragon is... Let's see, what is he going for? Getting Quick Octos once again going for an Octo Rush, and Shadow Fury... Once again, like the first game, doesn't seem to actually be expecting this. I mean, the thing is, is that Shadow Fury knows that Aragon likes Octo Rushes, but I think Shadow Fury is thinking that Aragon's... He's bound to change up his strategy one, someday. He just thinks, no, Aragon's... He's got to change it. He's got to change it. He can't just be going for Octo Rushes every single game. He's bound to... Like, it's been three days since our first match. He's bound to have been changing this. He's bound to have been going for other things. And though Shadow Fury this time is going for a Calm Hub instead of just waiting around and not going for the Calm Hub like in Game 2... Or at least, presumably. And Shadow Fury is also getting quite a lot of resources. So he's not expecting an Octorush early on. He is definitely... Okay, now he knows an Octorush is happening. But he's not expecting it. He's expecting that Aragon is going for different strategies. And apparently he's just overthinking things. Apparently Shadow Fury is just expecting that Aragon's going to do something different for once. And no, he's not. Aragon is going for Octos. That's exactly what's happening. So Shadow Fury getting his Zion Veer. Likely to get a Foundation fairly soon. His Calm Hub is up, and he does have... Well, Auto Hierarchy is off, I think. The thing is, Auto Hierarchy and Smart Idol are automatically turned on, which can be a little bit annoying. And so I tend to turn them off whenever I build a Calm Hub or Calm Center. I turn them off, but with that, it is... 
Smart Idol should be on by default. Auto Hierarchy, I'm not so sure. It does mean that your units start to auto Hierarchy to each other, which can be handy because it means that you don't have to spend Chrono Energy doing the Hierarchying, but you don't always want all of your units Hierarchy together. So it's something that I like to sometimes just turn on briefly and then turn back off if I want to just turn an entire army into one big hierarchy mass. It's handy for that. It's really handy for saving Chrono Energy requirements. It's just that I don't like to have it on automatically. So I tend to turn it off once I build a Com Hub. Although it does automatically turn on whenever the Com Hub activates, not only when it's built. So when it lands, you'll see it turn on again. Though I think I actually didn't turn it off. Bef yeah, I didn't turn it off before it lifted off. However, with... The main base, it looks like Zionvir are being produced en masse, and Aragon has gone for his attack. There he is, he's going up north, trying to make sure that there's nothing going tricky. He doesn't see the comm hub over to the south, but he is expecting one over the north, or just seeing if I've expanded over the north. Shadow Fury 53 is expanded to the north. And Shadow Fury, on the other hand, getting his foundation. But apparently, not too concerned. No attack has come in yet, just building more RPs, making sure he's not wasting any time building RPs. Wasted a little bit, there's 55 LC that he could have... Well, okay, he could have spent the ADLC sooner, but still, he is getting RPs, making sure he's not wasting too much time. And Aragon, on the other hand, doesn't have to worry about that. He can just continue to build RPs. His main base, I mean, it's really just a matter of going to progen mode and placing an auto-resource processor. Very easy. Aragon is definitely in a safer position right now. He has Octo-Rush coming in, and Aragon is going to be attacking Shadow Fury any minute now. Now, Shadow Fury will probably be able to defend, and does have his comm up in position to view everything that Aragon's up to. So he knows exactly what Aragon has planned. He doesn't know what Aragon has for resources, so he doesn't know that Aragon could, could not, in fact, build an Octopod right now. Which may give Aragon a bit of an advantage, while Aragon, on the other hand, is... waiting. He is waiting. And Shadow Fury is getting a depot during this waiting. Figuring that he can. Might as well. Though... Why is Aragon waiting? I, this this is, might still be right. I actually do recall that there was a fair amount of time where I felt like I could just build up with impunity. The Octobrush was not actually coming. I think Aragon's going back in the Unplayable Past and will be... Oh, he was just at the Unplayable Past edge or near the Unplayable Past edge. I'm guessing that was him sending his Oct Octos in to attack. But we'll find out once the green time wave comes along to propagate that. Because I do recall that I got overconfident in what I could build. And then paid for it. Or at least had to defend more frantically as a result. Now I'm getting my Zion Pulsers and everything. Okay, this is... Now, Aragon, further in the past, he has not sent his Octos in yet. No, he jumped back to the present, that's why. So he's trying to avoid staying in the past too long, and there we go, there's the attack. That is hitting. Now Aragon jumping back to focus on it, and this is what I was talking about. I got cocky and lost a Zion Veer. I think I might have lost more than one. Definitely taking some damage on that. Shadow losing quite a few... Well... Take a little bit of damage here, but Aragon, he does have to deal with the fact that there's a foundation healing this up. But Shadow Fury was dealing before with about two Octos, now it's just four Octos, and while he does have Zion Veers to defend, I don't believe it's enough. In fact, no, it's not enough. Unfortunately, they did not focus fire on the one, one Octo that was taking a bit more damage. So the Zion Veer is going down, and these Octos are still around. Shadow Fury needs to build more Zion Veer to deal with this, and is definitely in a tight spot for it. Okay, looks like he thinks he's actually won this match, or won this encounter. And Aragon moving forward, moving to the resource processor instead of the Zion Veer. And the one Zion Veer that built the resource processor continuing to go along its way and crawling back into the combat. Well, Aragon continuing to build up his main base without issue. And of course the combat coming in that we saw floating in. So Shadow Fury is trying to defend against this, able to defend against this just fine, and get a nice second resource processor. Well, onto LC instead of QP. Same resource processor, different location. But the depot is getting built nonetheless. So Shadow Fury has managed to get through that, getting a depot, getting a Zion Fury. He can build a Zion Pulsar from here. And Snowblind does offer some cliffs that are hard to counter. But Aragon, like I said, does not have the resources for an Octobod. So Shadow Fury probably going to go for a very quick Zion Pulsar once the depot is actually done. And then from there, go for an attack on the backside of the base. Now Aragon, on the other hand, at his point of view... He did. We did see him start to build an RP on Q Plasma about a minute up from here. So he is, or at least he jumped before he jumped back. So he's probably aware that Zion Pulses will be coming. He's probably going to build Octopods for that. And no, instead he is. Is he getting Faros? I think he might be getting Faros instead. He is getting some extra Octos, but he's using one of them for regeneration, which means he'll be getting Sepies or Faros pretty soon. 
And if he does that, the Faros will be able to deal with the Zion Pulsar somewhat. No, more Octos, one of which onto Q Plasma, and that will allow for an Octopod. Now, Shadow Fury does have his Zion Veer just about ready, and sorry, Zion Pulsar is ready, getting Skip Teleport to the five minute mark. And once that is ready, if he attacks the Implode Past Edge, I think that will. No, that won't quite do it. Aragon would be able to build an Octopod to counter this. It wouldn't be that easy. But there it comes in. Zion Pulsar is coming in and will be attacking. Shadow Fury actually might be a bit too far into the future, but... No, he's going for it. He is attacking, and this is going to give Aragon plenty of time to counter. Aragon knows exactly what's happening. Shadow Fury cannot have the Element of Surprise on his side anymore. And that would have been a great thing to have. It looks like one of the options is actually building a resource processor in the center right there. I'm not sure why he was building it in the center of that frozen lake, but at any rate, this Zion Pulsar is in a terrible spot. It, Of course, this deal with Octopods are inevitably going to come up. Aragon, there's that Octopod, and that is going to stop any Zion Pulsar attempts, unless about three or four come in, and that's not going to happen anytime soon. So Shadow Fury, not quite as much on the back foot as he was in the second game, but still in a terribly tight spot, and it looks like he is trying to build more Zion Pulsars Continue to build more Zion Pulsars, and getting a slightly more advantageous position, but the Octopods will inevitably come in. That's going to... Aragon is at the Unplayable Past Edge. He is going to send this Octopod in to deal with that Zion Pulsar. Better move would have been Zion Turchers for Shadow Fury. I build one of those, but even then, it's going to be tricky. There's a Faro that can detect that. So, Zion Turchers are still not necessarily the best move right now. I think the best move would simply be to out-expand. I mean, Shadow Fury doesn't have that big of an economic deficit. I think he actually has a, he has an economic advantage at this point. Yeah, he got attacked pretty hard early on, but he has an economic advantage. He could easily just contain and move on. But it looks like he's not planning on doing that. Not to mention, fighting Octoligos as Vekir is actually quite difficult to do. So Shadow Fury probably doesn't want to let that happen, because Octoligos did happen in the second game. We didn't see that happen, but they did happen. That was a major problem for Shadow Fury. So he is wary of Octoligos. He wants to win quickly. Actually, he does have the Zion Torture, so he is going for that. We will see how that will fare. But at this point, like I said, the Arcticus can detect. The Sepi, or the Faroshes can detect. The Arcticus has pretty wide vision range. So Zion Torture over here, if it kills the Faro, would probably be able to deal with it. But there is definitely a position where the Zion Torture can be cloaked and unimpeded. But it's not moving in. Shadow Fury, actually, at this point in time, has not decided to move in, just moving in the Zion Pulsar instead, and Aragon can once again move his forces to deal with this. So there's not a whole lot that can be easily done. However, Zion Torture is moving in as well. The last Zion Pulsar has not yet moved in. So Shadow Fury continue to attack pretty relentlessly, but the Octopod is in a close enough position to deal with the Zion Pulsar, even though it's on the ridge. And this is exactly what Aragon needed to do in Game 1, and he's doing it just fine in Game 3. And Zion Torture coming in to try to help deal with this, but... It's not able to deal enough damage to actually deal with it effectively. However, it, now it's out of range. Now it can't be seen. Just out of the far range. No, it's moving back into far range. Why is it moving into far range? Where is it going? Oh, it's cloaking up. Okay. Jumping up to the ridge. Able to deal some damage, but nowhere near as much as the Zion Pulsar can deal in that position. So Aragons, unfortunately for him, can't really deal with the Zion Torture, but fortunately for him, the Zion Torture isn't dealing all that much damage. So Aragont, further in the past... Taking a decent amount of damage, and Shadow Fury, on the other hand, has not moved his last Zion Pulsar in. The Zion Pulsar is still in the main base, not sure why. And unfortunately, the Zion Torcher has decided to move out of the way, possibly fearing some reprisal, but Shadow Fury moving that out of its good position, and actually dealing a fair amount of damage here. So Aragont, however, is moving back to try to deal with the Zion Torcher. It's still cloaked, but the Com Hub has been spotted. The Octopod able to start dealing with that. And I'm surprised no Faros have come up. Why? I'm, I, I am surprised Aragon has not built up Faros to deal with this. He is instead building up Octos, and that will help. But the fact that no Faros have been built up is surprising. And another com hub being constructed. Wait a sec. Now, I think this com hub was dead before I started rebuilding. Oh. Shoot. Okay, I'm not going to call it yet, but this looks weird. I'm pretty sure this combo was already dead. When I built the second combo, this combo had already been killed by the Octopod. This Zion Torture was already killed. I think the Zion Torture got detected by a built Faro. Which means, once again, I think everything's gone horribly, horribly wrong. It has to be my games, too. 
Well, at least I know what happened. That's, that's one benefit. I do know what happened in this game. Like, what happened in this game, ultimately, was that Aragon built up a bunch of Octoligos and just went in. And I was getting myself some air units. I got an electrical center by now. I gave myself air units, but I got caught up on the Arcticus. Kept getting caught up on the Arcticus. I got frustrated so much that I've actually since switched to CISO. So, when you see my later tournament matches, I'll be playing CISO, not Vecure, because I got rather frustrated with the way that Vecure played and the fact that Vecure was so micro-focused. I mean, it looks like it's working out really well in this game, but that's just because there was a slight failure in the replay playback. Like, as it stands, this replay is going much better for me than it actually the game actually went in reality. Like, although the Zion Treasure is going to take a lot of damage, it, it has run out of Cloak Energy, but still, this is going a lot better for me than it had before. Except for the general lack of units. That's actually different. But yeah, I don't know what happened with Aragon. Why it's not recording him having produced so many units, but apparently it hasn't. Because at this point, when I had all these units come in, there were a lot of Octoligos. There was, there were units coming in. There was a reef. There was advanced structures. Like, I had a lot to deal with, but right now it looks trivial. So yeah, at this point, this is wrong. Sorry, guys. So, yeah. Ultimately, I know it seems weird. Why did Shire Free surrender? He was winning. No, I wasn't winning. I was actually getting tor torn to shreds at that point. So Aragon did win. Unfortunately, he won. His one has been lost to history, as it were. <sighs> so I apologize for that. Rather disappointing and anticlimactic, and terribly unfortunate there's still our replay playback issues. But, at any rate, I hope you did enjoy that. And I will, once the next round of tournament matches has been played, get back to that. In the meantime, I'll probably be casting just exhibition matches either of Acron or 0k. So, at any rate, we have from this match, Shadow Fury and Aragont. That game is done. Shadow Fury will be fighting whoever loses between God and Haiku. And Titan and Aragont will be fighting each other. So round two has been set. Loser's round one has not been set. So basically when round two matches are played, then I will cast those. And once loser's round one matches have all been played, I'll cast those. And I'll just keep continuing along until we get all the way to the finals. Hopefully that is the only replay playback issues there are. Now, that is unfortunate. I... Really kind of wish it could have been a bit better than that. I don't know what happened with those games. It's weird. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and I wish you all a good night.